Hi, this is Jim from ePass Performance. We're here to show you the 57 kit that we have made. The kit consists of the ECU, electric motor, firewall plate, motor adapter, steering shaft, column adapter, and bracket. And if you choose to, you can get an identical column and we can fit it to your vehicle. And then now we need to move over and remove the steering column all the way down to the steering box and come over to the bench. Now that we have everything apart, we've got to cut the inner shaft, cut the tube, and make a double D on the steering gear. Starting with the steering gear, you'll have to double D the shaft coming out an inch and a quarter at least for the universal joint to hook up. Next, we're gonna move on to the center steering shaft, which will end up being 12 and a quarter, and then you'll want to double D that back up the shaft an inch and a quarter. Once you're done with that, you'll need to cut the tube from this flange down, and that is 10 and 7 eighths. After that is done, there's another hole that needs to be made, a half inch hole on the bottom side of the column, and that will be four and three eighths. Now we'll need to start hooking up the electric motor to the steering column. Okay, I'm showing you this because there's two ways of clamping the column to the electric motor. One way is if you take a nut and weld it and then use a set screw, or you use a clamp that we are now providing in our kits. In order to run the clamp, what needs to be done is one inch up the steering column, there needs to be three slots in three separate positions. That way the clamp is able to clamp down onto the electric motor. And now we'll need to install our electric motor to our steering column. Now that we have the upper assembly put together, we're gonna leave the set screws loose. So when we put it in the car, we can clock the motor correctly. First thing, we'll wanna put the steering gear back in. Started with the universal joint and the one inch double D through the firewall plate. Leave the firewall plate loose because you'll need to be a little loose in order to put the rest of the assembly together. And then you'll go ahead and put the upper half of the column in the car. Now that we have everything installed, we're gonna go ahead and put our bracket in. Once the bracket is in, we will go ahead and tighten up the firewall plate and all the remaining screws. Now that everything is installed, we're gonna to need to install the EPAS ECU. It consists of battery positive, steering sensor, potentiometer for steering feedback, and ignition hot. We're gonna to need to find a good place for the potentiometer for ease of use. Now that we've installed the ECU, we'll go ahead and turn the ignition hot, wait for the click. Okay, now the system is ready. We'll need to go test drive it, and all you'll need to do to finish is straighten the steering wheel, and you'll be good to go. Thank you for watching the video.